Today we're going to talk about the AMD Ryzen 5000 buying guide. Where can you find stock, house availability, and which one of these four chips should you get? And yes, my shirt does have PC fans on it and a CPU cooler, so let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Just want to thank Be Quiet for sending me this cool holiday sweater. So today, let's talk about AMD and specifically the Ryzen 5000 CPUs. There are basically right now four that you should know about. There's the 5600X, 5800X, 5900X, and the 5950X. We're going to talk about the stock, availability, as well as performance and some important thermal information, especially about one of these specific CPUs that you should know before buying it. So first, let's talk about stock and availability. Now, we all know it's been very difficult to get these CPUs, but some of them certainly have been coming in stock. The 5900X and the 5950X have been the rarer amongst all four of them. Certainly, even when places like Micro Center get a 5900X, 950X, it seems to sell out pretty quickly. I was able to get mine on launch day because I was there pretty early, but aside from that, they really haven't been around too much. 5900X definitely seems to be one of the harder CPUs to get. The 5950X, not as many people looking for it, but still having said that, really even rarer because it's such a high performing CPU. And of course, AMD is going to make less of them just because of the price and because of the yields that they need to make such a high performing processor. So then that's going to leave us with the 5600X and the 5800X in terms of stock and availability. How did these two stack up? First, the good news is that it's going to be a lot easier to find one of these two CPUs as opposed to the other ones. Now, the 5600X technically should be the one that's more widely available. It's going to be the one that comes in at two $299 versus the 5800X, which comes in at $449. When Ryzen 5000 first launched, it was certainly true that the 5600X seemed to be the more widely available one. In fact, stores had stock of it. Newegg even had it up for a good 10 to 15 minutes, which seems like an infinity amount of time compared to the few seconds or even up to a minute of some previous hardware launches like the Nvidia GPUs. So if you're checking out on Newegg or any even Amazon, the 5600X most likely will be the one you'll more readily find in stock but recently I've been seeing a lot of the 5800X as an example recently it was up on Amazon with a January shipping date as well as local micro centers like my local micro center got 25 plus of it on several occasions it seems like for some reason the 5800X is considerably more available than any of the other higher SKUs and it seems almost equal at this point to the 5600X now I'm gonna have a few more thoughts on the 5800X and why this may be and why this one is the one that you may most likely want to avoid if you have a choice between all of the other CPUs. So to summarize stock and availability, they're still pretty difficult to find, but certainly you're going to have a better chance at the two lower SKUs. And remember, in the future, we do have some other ones coming out like a 5700, maybe a 5600 as well without the X. So they're certainly going to come in a little bit better pricing. And since they're not going to be the X variants, maybe their chip quality is going to be slightly lower than the ones that we have now, hopefully meaning that the yields are better and that they can produce more of them to satisfy the demand on the market. So now let's go on to performance and performance for the dollar as well as thermals. Now the 5600X is going to be a six core 12 thread CPU and if you can find one of these and all you're doing is really gaming this one might be one of the best CPUs that you can buy right now for that price. Of course we also have Intel that's still competing. In fact I've seen the 10900K on sale as well as the 10850K for $399 and you may be able to get something like a 10700K for $299. So if all you're doing is gaming and you are having a hard time finding one of these Ryzen 5000 CPUs. You could look at Intel as well. They certainly seem to be a little bit more available and they're priced pretty well at this point. It's kind of funny how everything flipped on its head and Intel is actually what seems like the more budget option. But anyway, the 5600X has fantastic single core performance, very low latency, great IPC, things that are very important when you're gaming. In fact, in many cases, it equals and even outperforms many of these more expensive Intel chips that were traditionally 
great at gaming. So it's something with only a TDP of 65 watts. This CPU certainly is very impressive. And if you look at benchmarks like Cinebench, it's even gonna beat out a 10900K in terms of its single core performance. Now, of course, if you wanna do more than just gaming, if you wanna do content creation, and if multi-core and multi-threaded applications are important to you, then you should look at a higher count processor because when it comes to that, then of course, something like a 10900K will beat the 5600X because then we're talking about six cores versus 10 cores. And that makes a big difference if whatever you're using has multi threaded workloads. And while $299 for the 5600X certainly keeps it away from like a budget entry level CPU, for that you're probably going to have to wait until maybe something like a 5600, which could come in closer to $200 or $220 when it eventually releases. Of course, it's not going to perform quite as well as the X variant out of the box, but if they're anything like we've seen with previous generations, you can easily overclock the non X variants to pretty similar performance. So if you can save some money there, I really don't don't think you're going to be losing any performance at all. An added bonus to the 5600X, it seems to run fairly cool with a TDP of only 65 watts, and it's the only one from the current generation that actually comes with the stock cooler in the box. For all the other Ryzen 5000 CPUs, you're going to have to add your own cooling. So that just kind of shows you that you don't need that beefy of a cooling system to be able to handle this CPU, and that can certainly be great, especially in smaller form factor computers. So moving on to the second CPU of the bunch, that's the 5800X. And talking about temperatures, I've made a few videos on these and a lot of people have actually had a similar experience out of all four Ryzen 5000 CPUs will probably be the one that's gonna be running the hottest. Now, this really isn't a deal breaker by any means. Some people have gotten 5800Xs that don't really run that hot. They seem to be running pretty normally, but there's also a lot of anecdotal evidence from many more people that this CPU in a lot of cases is going up to 80 and even 90 Celsius. Of course, AMD says this is the standard operation for this type of processor. We have to remember it's clocking really high. It's only going to be a single CCD and it's certainly going to have more wattage per core. So we're talking about a lot packed in there and it certainly can't handle the heat like some of the others. It's still not the best experience out of the box if your CPU is going really, really high. It's nicer having a little bit better starting point or else everything's just going to be running hotter, including your radiator or air cooler, just kind of throwing more heat in your system. But it would be nice if this CPU ran a little bit cooler out of the box but if you can find it and maybe that's one of the reasons why there are more available it doesn't have the best thermals some people are okay like i said some people have a very hot running cpus but it also doesn't have the great price to performance ratio at 449 dollars if you really figure it out sort of the price per core and the performance that you're getting it's definitely going to be a little bit over the mark i would prefer something like a 5900x but then we come back to the stock issue like we mentioned before the 50 5800X seems to be actually more widely available. Even local stores like Micro Center having 25 plus in stock at once. I certainly haven't seen that from the higher end CPUs. So that's something to keep in mind. And now in terms of performance, yeah, it performs fantastically well. And technically eight core 16 thread most likely is a very good sweet spot for gaming. Some games can take advantage of some more cores, especially going up in the future. That way you're gonna be a little bit more future proof, definitely more future proof than even the 5600 x but when you consider the price to performance and even the thermals i would say if you had a choice between both of them and all you're doing is sort of gaming i may lean a little bit more towards the 5600x just save some of that money and now talking about the 5900x this one is going to be fairly difficult to find it is going to be a ryzen 9 and technically this is the best performing gaming cpu out right now it's going to be the one that's going to give you the best performance overall in your games it's a little bit more than the other cpus it's not a tremendous difference and the 5900x because of the way the die is and everything like that most likely will run a little bit cooler than the 5800x out of the box so certainly for a 12 core 24 thread cpu this is really a fantastic cpu not only for gaming but also for content creation i mean 12 cores was pretty amazing a few years ago and it continues to be amazing as well even though we have higher end SKUs. so if you can find a 5900x and it fits in your budget this probably is going to be the best one that you you can buy from Ryzen 5000. But once again, we reach that problem of stock and availability. It is going to be one of the rarer ones along with the 5950X. So that's certainly going to be fairly difficult to find. Otherwise, you're stuck sort of with the 5600 or the 5800X. And then of course, coming in at $800, we have the 5950X. Now this one, like the 5900, is just as difficult to find, if not more difficult. And the performance is staggered.
staggeringly good 16 core 32 thread not only is it fantastic for gaming pretty much performing almost as good as the 5900x if you're doing any type of content creation it also absolutely smashes most of those applications and it's really a high-end cpu sort of in the mainstream market type of platform so i think it's an incredible value even if you compare it versus threadripper even though that has a lot better performance in certain applications for the price that you're paying for this as well as the motherboard price for x570 you could even throw it on a b550 motherboard motherboard you're certainly getting a fantastic value and performance for your dollar now the biggest problem with the 5900 and the 5950x is going to be availability but that's because they're not only higher performing more expensive i think a lot more people certainly will get them as soon as they come back in stock or and as soon as they see them compared to even something like the 5800x which like i said seems to linger around a little bit longer than the other cpus when it does come in stock partly that's due to having a little bit higher price per core as well as we mentioned it does have those thermal issues that kind of threw some people off a little bit and of course they are manageable but it's still great when you have a cpu that's performing out of the box significantly cooler so you don't have to go in and modify and undervolt and things of that nature all right guys so i hope you enjoyed this brief little look at the different ryzen 5000 cpus kind of where we're at at the end of the year i know they've been a little bit difficult to find but at least the two lower SKUs have occasionally come in stock maybe a few times a week in different retailers so remember to keep an eye on that let us know if you're able to find any down below remember Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.